So two. Lucas gets already his lead out and already in second position. Yeah. Interesting to see how they're gonna play that. Yeah, they need to get other other teams and riders around them to to help out with the with the pace making. Here comes Astana. And they're looking for Ricardo Minali. Still looking for his first serious professional win since turning pro at the start of the year. Of course, from very good cycling stock, and he had some decent results in his first professional races, the likes of Dubai Tour early on, when he was against some of the top sprinters in the world. He certainly has the speed, Minali. He's got some experienced men to pilot him in position as well, the likes of Luis Leon Sanchez and Oscar Gato. Movement for quick step on the left hand side. Really pulling things along here. Price is spike very, very similar to uh, to his dad. Quick step, the whole train at the front. Davide Martinelli is a, a decent finisher, but of course he's not one of the big sprinters. Neither is Remy Cavagno, who's a young French time trialist. Nicky Terep, sure we all know what he can do. Bakoch, good, but. You wouldn't expect him to beat the likes of Sagan and Ewan in a sprint. Same with Max Schachmann. It's an interesting tactic for them to go to the front. I wonder what they're planning here. Well, it could be. So, if I wanted to have an attack launched, I would probably go to the forget so a couple of riders to the front, bring the pace up so high for a short period of time, so that everyone is struggling to to sort of stay on the wheels and having to work really hard in the wheels and then just basically stop it and hope that the old rider that is looking for that move then is in a good position and can carry that speed on and, and uh, counter-attack basically on the team's pace setting. A little look round from Nicky Terepstra who's setting that pace on the front. There it goes. 2.7 kilometers to go. Katowice, our destination on stage two of the Tour of Poland. So Schachmann is up there for quick step at about seventh wheel. It's now Luca Mesgetz already the Slovenian champion riding for Orica Scott. Look who's on his wheel. Still 2.4 kilometers to go here. And what happens? And there's the move. There is the move from quick step. And it looks as though it's Vakoc. Yeah, it certainly looks like him. Peter Vakoc, the former Czech champion out there attacking having a go Nikki Terep just set him up a minute ago two kilometers to go so we got this one long straight up here now it falls flat uphill and then come around the roundabout and there's a kilometer to go down to the finish line then so Vakoc is going really going to have to work hard especially at this part here now this is where he'll make or break this uh, this attack and uh, if he can cause the, the riders in the bunch behind to sort of go well oh this is costing me too much energy to bring this but Caleb Ewan on the front there already now with Mesquets trying to sort of encourage other riders to uh, to come through and do the do the work um, it's Patetsky who might be about to save the sprinters day because Patetsky's trying to come across here he's in the dark blue jersey he's bringing a rider with him from uh, Lotto Sudar remember they have Jens de Bussera also a rider hanging around there for dimension data it's getting very messy as a real lack of control just like there was yesterday yeah very much a lack of control and this is what I said with the, with the seven man teams that one extra rider makes such a big difference and uh, this is certainly a yeah, very interesting finish and Nathan Haas is up there again very close to the front is he gonna have a go in the sprint three sky riders up there as they approach the final kilometer sky remember riding for Danny van Poppel the rider from the Netherlands here here is that roundabout Vakoc looks as though he's about to be caught one kilometer to go Vakoc being chased down sky already with from Poppel behind but what is the damage that's been done to Peter Sagan he's way down in about 15th position has to move up here has 900 meters to do so should be okay if he can make his position Vakoc is caught then sky have four men in the lead out here all ready to do their job for Danny from Poppel Regigi on the left hand side is there the Algerian champion for dimension data just behind him Roberto Ferrari Rui Costa's up there on the right hand side as well from Poppel on the right you can see See that uh, there's a man for Cannondale Drapak involved as well. 500 meters to go now. Katusha trying to lead this one out too. It's a very messy, very different sprint to the one we thought we might see. Peter Sagan still caught out on the left hand side. He's trying to move up through that gap on the right. I'm not sure there is one though. And I think that Sagan might be boxed out here. It's Volskheid on the left hand side. But look at this model of through the center. Model on Alpha UAE. Model all the way. I think model about how this is Sasha Model. 
More than all for UAE Team Emirates in what was an almightily messy sprint. Sagan boxed out, Modolo takes it, and it was a big, big win for a man who hasn't won for quite a while on the World Tour. Yeah, that, that was very much a, a sort of a, a find your, have your luck on your side and uh, and get through, find that gap. And um, I think, yeah, Modlo did that very, very well. And he tends to be a, a, a man who goes well in the sort of messier sprints. It's very similar to what I've seen in the last few years that we've had this, this finish when there's been a bunch sprint. By the time you get into that top roundabout, you need to be in the sort of fifth or sixth wheel already up there. And then you've got opportunities to sort of move left to right. By the time you're down into 10th wheel, there is no way of coming back from there. You're boxed in because of, uh, of, of how fast this sprint is. Everyone was basically flat out from about six to 700 meters to go, and uh, there was just no more speed in it. Well, Ferrari been up there. His teammate Rui Costa was there as well. And that is Sacha Monolo's fourth win of the season. His first on the world tour for over two whole years. Victory for UAE Team Emirates. There were riders all over the road here. Sagan was boxed out. Ricky Key tried to go with him. Ferrari stayed on the right-hand side. Modolo hit the wind on the left. He's up against riders from Trek Segafredo and Team Sunweb. But Modolo didn't really have any competition despite the fact that Van Poppel was gaining all the time. Van Poppel did enough for second place there. And I think it's Valskide who finishes in third. Boy Van Poppel through the center. Danny finishing in second place.